ahead and get your answers out and compare them to the rules. Again, if there are any that we need to go over, I am happy to discuss how we arrive at these rules if we were unable to get them. So take a moment, check your answers, and then let me know if there are any that we need to go over. Once you have finished checking your answers, please make sure you get patty paper from the packet we sent you colored pencils, a straight edge. And we are gonna do an activity after this. Once you have finished checking your answers, raise your hand when you have finished checking your answers. By all means, I am happy to review the rules, if anyone needs me to go over how we arrive at these, these rules, these functions. Rhesus, check them all. Christopher, did you check your rules? Did you get the rules right? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay, good. Okay, once you have checked all your rules, please raise your hand in teams. And if there are any that we need to go over, by all means, I am happy to go over them. So Eric, I don't know if you were able to watch the video and do the, the, the rules and make sense of the exponential functions. Did you have an opportunity to make sense of that and try those? Uh, no, ma'am. I wasn't in a place where I had signal yesterday. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So we did move on to exponential functions yesterday. So do try to make sense of that. Um, watch the video. If you have any questions, let me know. Are there any of the rules that we need to go over? No, we got them all. I'm trying to communicate with people while we're on here. Okay. All right. If y'all got all the rules, then that's that's unbelievable. That is that is magnificent. I'm happy to go over any of them that we need to go over. So I mean, we're moving on. So speak now or forever hold your peace, right? Um, and then Eric, of course, look at the video and see if you can uh, make sense of it. Okay, if there are really no questions, we got all those rules. Yay for you. That's fantastic. Let's move forward. Okay, so what we are going to work on next, going once, going twice, rules are gone. Okay, what we are going to work on next is 
this activity. So go ahead and turn to your notes in your, in your binder, <coughs> in your packet to this activity. This is what we are going to work through next. This is going to allow us to manipulate functions and eventually discover a new family of functions. So make sure that you have patty paper. You should have gotten some patty paper in your packet. Can I see you with your patty paper? Can everybody show me that they have their patty paper, please? Okay, Eric's got patty paper. I see everybody's got the patty paper. Okay, so we're still waiting on Christopher to show me the patty paper. Abiella has it, Natalie has it, Nathan has it, Eric has it. Christopher, you got your patty paper? You got your patty paper, Christopher? Yeah, I do. Okay, all right, all right, here we go. Are we excited? I am going to do my best to demonstrate the first few steps so that um, you understand what you're supposed to be doing in this. So let me go through, you do the first few steps with me <clears throat> and let's see how well this. And let me stop sharing here because y'all should all have the activity out. So let me stop presenting so that you can actually see this. Okay, let me make sure it's showing. Uh oh. Ah, not that one. Okay, let's see how well this works. I'm trying this. This is the first time I am using this. So we'll see how it works. Okay, can you see what I am showing? Can y'all see me in the camera? Can you see my, oh, I don't see it here. This is confusing me. I'm trying to do too many devices at the same time. Can you see this? Yes? Yes, you can see it. Okay. All right. So let's walk through the steps of the activity. You are going to do the steps at the same time. So here we go. The first step says take a piece of patty paper and fold the sheet twice to form the axes of the Cartesian plane. So what does that mean? That means I am folding it horizontally and then creating the vertical axis. So if I fold this and then I open it up, do you see the Cartesian plane? Yes? Yes. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and draw the Cartesian plane, if I can find my pen. So I'm going to draw the Cartesian plane. So fold it and then draw your Cartesian plane. So I have this and I have this and I'm going to label them X and Y. So everybody is doing this at the same time. If you have questions, Stop me. I'm going through the first few steps kind of slowly so that it can make you can make sense of it. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's reversed. Let me see if I can switch it. Oh, I don't want to see myself. Let's see. Oh, it's right. Okay, it's X. It looks backwards to me on here. So I'm losing my mind just a little bit. Okay, so does everybody have the Cartesian plane? 
Yes? Okay. The next thing it's telling you to do is fold your patty paper to form the line y equal x. So can somebody hold up their patty paper and show me how you are drawing, how are you folding your paper to get y equal x? Can anybody show me? Anybody? How would we fold our paper to get y equal x? Diagonally, very good. Yes, diagonally. So if I fold my paper this way, I can get the line, I have to be very careful. I can get the line y equal x. Now I know this isn't gonna be absolutely perfect, but we're doing our best. So I have folded the line, I folded the patty paper, and I'm gonna trace the line. Now we've looked at this line before. We have manipulated and created a table of values and shown this line before. If I were to make tick marks, and let me go ahead and make tick marks because we're gonna do some more graphing. So I wanna make sure that I have my, my, my units marked correctly. So let me go ahead and go ahead and mark your units as well. So in other words, I'm gonna count here, one, two, three. So I'm, let's make our units. Okay, so that would be one, and this would be negative one. And then if I do the same thing here, That would be one, that would be negative one. And we know about all the points that fall on this line. We know that one, one, two, two, three, three, because the y value equals the x value. So I can graph this line and I can actually plot points. So let's go ahead and make sure we have our Cartesian plane. We have our line y equal x. We've labeled our axes and we have labeled our scale because this is going to prove to be very useful and necessary for us to be able to answer the questions and do the rest of the steps. Okay, speak up if you need me to slow down. If you, if you, you need more time to do these things, tell me, but I'm going through the process as well with you. Now, number three in investigation one says, what are the characteristics of all the points that lie on this line? Well, we've talked about this. We know all points on this line have an X and a Y value that are equal. The X value is the Y value. Our equation is Y equals X. So we've labeled that. Number four says sketch the function Y equal two X plus one. The function Y equal two X plus one is what type of function? You tell me. What type of function is y equal to x plus one? Abiella, do we know? Christopher? Linear. It is a linear function. And how do you know that? By looking at the equation, Abiella. Um, it doesn't um it doesn't have the rise to the power of two. That's right. The, the highest power of X is one. So we know it's linear. And so the graph is going to look like what? What does the graph of a linear function look like? A line, right? So can we graph that line? What would be the first step in graphing the line Y equals 2x plus 1. If I want to graph y equals 2x plus 1, how am I going to do that? What do I plot first? 
Anybody? What do we do? Christopher, what do we do? Reese, somebody. Start at zero, one, and then go up two and over one. Beautiful. So I'm going to plot the y-intercept, which is zero, one, and then I'm going to rise two, and I'm going to run one. So then I have another point. I can connect those two points and graph the line. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is the line y equals 2x plus 1. So I have my Cartesian plane. I have my line y equal x. And I have my line y equals 2x plus 1. So on number four, it says sketch the function y equals 2x plus 1 on the Cartesian plane. Now, this is where it gets super interesting. Are we ready for the next step? Yes, can you shake your head? Nathan, you ready for the next step? Graffin, Christopher, we're ready for the next step. Eric? Yes, Abiella? Yes, Natalie, I don't see your face. Is there a reason why I don't see your face, Natalie? Yeah, miss, I have my thing, I'm moving around my phone a bit and I don't wanna distract anyone with all the moving around my camera might be doing. Okay, all right. Uh, at some point I need, I'm gonna, when we finish the activity, I'm gonna need you to hold up the piece of patty paper for me to see it though, okay? Okay, all right, so number five, here we go. Number five tells us to fold the sheet of patty paper along the line y equal x, and we are looking for the reflection of this line across y equal x. Okay, so here we go. I am folding my paper along y equal x. If I fold my paper along y equal x, can you see this under, you see the reflection through the patty paper? Do you see the reflection through the patty paper? So now what you're going to do is you're going to look through the patty paper and you are going to trace what you see. Now I'm only seeing part of it, right? Because this part, I'm gonna have to turn it over and see through the patty paper that way as well to get the other piece of the reflection. So I'm looking through the patty paper. Okay, so then I've folded along y equal x, and do you see through this transparency paper, do you see the reflection? So I can actually trace that one and make it darker if I need to see it darker. This is what I traced through the patty paper. Do you see that? So the green one, y equals 2x plus 1, was the original. I reflected it, so I've, I'm folding. So there's my, my, my line of symmetry, if, if I, if I want to look at it that way, the way we did in the past with the other functions. Folding it and getting the mirror image on the other side of that line. So this piece was reflected over here. This piece was reflected over y equal x to come up here. Can everybody get to that point? Yes, I need to see your graphs. Once you get to this point, you need to hold your graph up and I need to see that you have graphed it. Okay, Nathan has gotten it. Reese has gotten it. Yay! Natalie, did you get it? Eric, 
Christopher, Abiella, let me see your patty paper. Oh, I had some people. Miss, my paper, I didn't have that type of paper in my in the package you sent me, so I'm using a different type of paper. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it works really for anything if you can see through it. I don't know why you didn't get the patty paper. Eric's got his patty paper. Excellent. Natalie, Abiella, fantastic. Okay, we are getting this. I am so pleased. Excellent, 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 excellent. Okay, now this is where the discovery begins. It asks you to describe the relationship between two tables of values if you were to collect points on this line. So let's take a look at a few points that are on our original line y equal 2x plus 1. I'm going to create a table of values. So I have x and I have y. I'm looking at this line here. I know my y-intercept is 0, 1, right? That's my y-intercept. I know that point exists, so I'm creating a table of values. Now, another point that I found by following Reese's directions, by plotting the y-intercept, rising to, running 1, the slope, I have this other point. So what is this other point that I know? Can somebody tell me? What is that other point? Christopher, it looks like you want to tell me. What is this point here? What's the ordered pair for that point? Uh, one and three. Okay, but what is it as an X and a Y value? I need, okay, okay, oh, yeah. I see what you X, say. One, X is one and yes. And y is three. Beautiful, one and three. Now, do I know any other points? Well, it looks like this is a nice integer value. That's another point that falls on this line. So I could say negative one, negative one. I could actually substitute many values in for X and get the corresponding value for Y. So what if I said let X equal two? If I substitute two in for X, what is y? Substitute 2 in for x in the equation, and what is y? 5. 5. Okay, so do we see that we have another point here, 2, 5? So this was 2, 5. This was 1, 3. This was 0, 1. This was negative one, negative one. So I have a nice little table of values for my original line. Now, what we are trying to do is figure out what maybe is the relationship among the domain and the range, the X and Y values, these points with the reflected line. So if I look at the ref reflection across y equal x, can I maybe look at those x and y values and see a relationship between these domain and range values and perhaps some points that fall, and I'll give you a little hint, that fall on that line. Do we see a relationship? I've put these points for a very specific reason. So maybe label those points and kind of look at the relationship between the domain and range values in the original function and the domain and range values in the reflection across y equal x. I'm going to give you a minute to think about that. And let's create a table of values, maybe using these numbers up here.
Now, once you think you've gotten it, I would like you to try to answer the questions eight, nine, and 10. When you think you have the answers of eight, nine, and 10, raise your hand in teams. Because I'd like to go over these answers and then I'm gonna give you time to work on the other investigations. So I want you to populate a table, maybe kind of utilizing these domain and range values. When you finished, try to answer questions eight, nine, and 10. We will go over them and then I need everybody to hold up their, their piece of paper all at the same time so I can take a picture. I'll take a picture of you and your patty paper exploration. So try to do eight, nine, and 10 and we will discuss the answers. Raise your hand in teams when you think you have the relationship. And given a graph of a line particularly, you should be able to write the equation. When you have finished eight, nine, and 10 to the best of your ability, raise your hand in teams. We're trying to answer eight, nine, and 10. When you think you have an answer, raise your hand in teams. Or if you're completely stuck, we will go over the answers, but raise your hand in teams to, to tell me that you're ready to go over them. I've given you some points, maybe, maybe to identify, Raise your hand in teams when you are ready to go over the answers. If you have finished this one, you can go ahead and create the X and the Y axis by folding your next piece of paper, patty paper together. Cause we're gonna do another, you're gonna do another exploration 
and you'll need another piece of patty paper. So if you wanna go ahead and fold the next one and, and label your X and your Y axis and write your coordinates, I mean, not your, your scale and label your axes, you can go ahead and fold the next piece because we're gonna do the next investigation. Christopher, how you coming? You think you got the answers? Uh, uh, I'm a little lost. That's okay, that's okay. If you, if you want more time to think, I can give you more time to think, but if you are at the point where you would like us to discuss it, just raise your hand. Same thing with everybody else. If you, if you still thinking, I'm not gonna rush you, but if you would like us to go ahead and go over the answers, Raise your hand in teams. Okay, Christopher's ready to hear the answers. Re Christopher's ready. Abiella, how about you? Uh, Eric, you still, you're ready, Abiella? Eric, you still thinking? Eric's working hard. Eric, you ready for the answer? Or are you still thinking? You still working? You're, yes, no, maybe. You're ready. Okay. Um, uh, Nathan stepped away for just a second, so I want to make sure he hears the answers. But I'm going to go ahead and ask you to give me the ordered pairs of the points that we identified on this reflected line. So if, what is the ordered pair for this point? Can you tell me? This point. We said it was. You know, I'm not going to answer. I'm going to wait for you to answer me. Negative one X and Y is negative one. Okay, thank you. What about this point? What is this point? As an ordered pair, what is that point? Anybody? Christopher, you gonna give this one to me too? Order pair. X is one and Y is one. Y is zero, right? Oh, oh. We're all, we're on the we're on the X axis, right? Okay. What about this point? If this was one, this is two, this is three. What is this ordered pair? So this one we said was one zero. What about this ordered pair? What is that ordered? Yes, three one. And last but not least, that was four, this was five, this is two. What is this ordered pair? Five, 
five two. Five two. Okay. So we reflected the original line across y equal x. We labeled some points on that reflection. And now we're looking at the original table of values. So this was our original table of values. And we're looking at the table of values of points that fall on the reflection across y equal x. So what if we look at the x and the y intercepts in particular, well, the x intercept here is one zero. And let me highlight that one. So, ooh, that didn't come out very pretty, did it? That was one zero. Look how that compares here, I don't want to color on top of it because it's bleeding, over here. What do you notice? Do you notice a relationship between the domain in the original function and the range of the reflected function and vice versa? Are you seeing that? Let's, let me see if I can get a different, I brought it with me. I do. Yay for me. Look at this. Look at these domain values. Look at these range values. Do you see that? The domain values of the original function are the range values of the reflection across y equal x. Similarly, the range values of your original function are the domain values of the reflection across y equal x. So when you reflect the line or any graph across the line y equal x, the reflection interchanges the domain and the range values. This is what's going to lead us to what is known as the inverse of a function. When you take the inverse of a function, geometrically, you are reflecting it across y equal x. Similarly, your domain and your range values are interchanged. Okay, so I need everybody to turn their cameras on. Everybody but Aviala has it on. Then I want you to hold up your patty paper and I need to take a picture. So keep your patty paper up of your graph so that I can take a picture. So everybody, Christopher, Reese, everybody's got, oh, my, my picture's here. Uh, I want to see, okay, let me take one there and then let me come over here and take a picture here. Uh-oh, one more second. Yay! Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so this is a very important concept, the inverse of a front function. You should have heard this in algebra two, taking the inverse of a function. So what I want you to do now is I want you to do investigation two and investigation three, and then I want you to summarize. Now, as you're doing them, if you get stuck, by all means, ask me questions or ask each other questions. What I'm going to ask you to do after you've done all of the investigations is I'm going to need to see your pad papers. So we're doing the investigations. You're graphing on patty paper. Nathan, here you go. Go graph. You're doing different graphs. And we're going to look at what happens when we take the inverse of nonlinear functions, functions that are not lines. We'll see the same relationship. But something interesting th happens, right? Um, 
Before we do that, I just want to ask, does anybody have the equation of this inverse? Were we able to write the equation? We know the original equation was y equals 2x plus 1, but could you give me the equation of the inverse? By looking at the table or the graph, could you tell me what the equation is? Can anybody tell me? Was anybody able to find it before we move on? Y equals, what is the slope of that line? Can we go from one point to another point and count the rise and the run? What is the slope? Eric, you're shaking your head like you know. So what, what's the slope? Can you count it? If I go, let's say, from this point to this point and I count the rise and I count the run, what's the slope? Sorry if it's a little loud, but is it one over two? One over two, yes. Now, beautiful. Now, I could have calculated that using the slope formula, right? I could have picked two points on the line and used change of y over change of x to get get the slope, and then I could substitute in a point and get the B. So it's two, one half X plus, do we know the Y value of the Y intercept? Can we solve for that B? Negative one. Uh, not negative one, right? It crosses here. So it's negative what? Anybody? Christopher, can you tell me? Abiella, can you tell me? Natalie? Nathan? Reese, anybody? Tell me the y value of the y intercept for this reflected line. Negative one? Not negative one. This is negative one. The line passes through the y axis here. So what is that value? Negative one half? Yes. Ne yes. And I could calculate that, right? Y'all should be able to calculate that B. So this is the equation of the reflected line. Is it a function? Is the reflection a function? Yes, it's a line that passes the vertical line test. Okay, very good. All right, go ahead and work on investigation two and three. And when you think you have finished and done the summary, raise your hand. I will let you work. If you get stuck, discuss it with each other, please.
Of course, if you need help with what these graphs look like, feel free to put the equation in Desmos and look at the original. And then if you think you have the equation of the inverse, put it in Desmos as well as the line y equal x and see if it is correct. Look at it in Desmos. You can always check these in Desmos. Is it making sense? Christopher, is it making sense? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Nathan? Fabiella? Natalie, we're able to do the graphs and answer the questions? Yeah. Okay, good. As you work, if you need to take a break and use the facilities, feel free. Once you have finished investigation two and three in the summary, raise your hand in Teams. I'm gonna go use the facilities, I'll be right back.
Are we making progress? Have we finished activity two? Can you shake your head and let me know if we're on three yet? Have we finished two? No, we're still on two? Okay, Natalie's still on two, that's fine. You let me know if you get stuck.
Okay, when you have finished investigation two, continue working on investigation three, but if you have completed investigation two, raise your hand in teams. If you have finished investigation two, raise your hand in teams, but keep working. I'm just trying to get a progress check. Okay, if you finished investigation two, raise your hand in teams when you finish it. Um, keep working, but if you have finished investigation two, raise your hand in teams, but keep working. I'd like to go over the answers to these three investigations before we leave today um, and kind of preempt what we're going to be doing with logarithms tomorrow. Okay, y'all are making progress. Good. Keep working.
Okay, it looks like everybody has finished investigation two. Uh, would you like to go over two or would do you want to keep finishing three and then we go over everything at the end? Somebody give me feedback. Do you want to go over two now or do you want to finish the entire assignment and then we go over it at the end? Feedback. Uh, go finish over the two. entire assignment. You want to finish the whole thing. Christopher, what did you say? Uh, go over two. Okay, you want to go over two? Okay. I, 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 and, and Natalie, I know you, I know you, Abiella, I know y'all want to finish the whole thing, but it, to make sure that we're on the right track, I'm just going to quickly go over the answers to number two to make sure that we are on the right track. So let me go ahead and share my screen so we can go over those. Um, but we I will give you more time to work on number three and the summary. But let's just make sure that we are on the same track and we're doing it correctly. Okay, so you were asked to now in number two, fold a sheet of patty paper twice to form the Cartesian plane, the X and the Y axis, and then we labeled Y equal X. I'm just gonna draw it here, the investigation. So um, instead of doing it, so then we have Y equal X. And then you were asked to graph Y equals X squared. So what parent function is that? You should know this. What parent function is Y equal X squared? And I know I'm interrupting you working so hard on that third one, but I, I do want to make sure we're doing it correctly and focusing on detail. So what is Y equal X squared? Can y'all pause from number three and tell me what that is? What is Y equal X squared? Quadratic. It is the parent quadratic function. So I could make a table of values if I wanted to. And I could substitute, since the domain is all real numbers, I could choose anything I want. So I'm just going to choose those. If I substitute in, I'm going to get 1, 0, 1, and 4. You should be able to quickly graph that. The parent looks like that. Uh, I'm kind of doing a quick little sketch, so forgive me for it not being absolutely perfect. Okay, so we have a parabola. We graphed it. If you folded the sheet of patty paper along y equal x, can, can you hold up? Can I see, can somebody or y'all show me uh, what it looked like when you folded y equal x squared. Can I see that? Can somebody show me that? Eric, you look like you're getting it. Can I see y equal x squared? Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So if I reflected that, it looked like this, right? So, and, and what's happening here is very important, right? Because this little piece here, becomes this piece here, right? So we have to be kind of careful with that, right? Because the Y equal X goes through it. So then you were to make two tables of value. So if this was our original table, we could find the inverse by easily interchanging the domain and range. So if I look at the inverse, right? So the reflection, across y equal x. Notice what you have. When x is zero, we have zero. When x is one, I'm at plus one, but I'm also at minus one, right? Do you see that? There's two values, plus or minus one. I'm here. And I'm here. And then at four, 
I'm at plus or minus two. So what are you noticing? You're noticing that the domain has now changed, right? We don't take on any negative values of X in the inverse, in the reflection across Y equal X. Why? Because this part here becomes this. This part here becomes this. Do y'all see that? So if I'm looking at the reflection, it's just this. Dot. So the domain, right? The domain would be zero to infinity. And the range would be negative infinity to infinity. Do you see that? So the X and the Y intercept is zero, zero. Since it falls on Y equal X, it doesn't change, right? Does anybody think they have the equation of the image? So the image, remember, is in this case, the reflection across y equal x. Does anybody think they know the equation of this function or of this relation? I kind of gave it. Anybody, do you think you got it? If, 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 if you should remember from algebra two, how to talk to the Say that again. Like, may I might have it. Okay, go ahead. Try. Try. Not like two different ones, but then I like put them together to get the absolute value of x to the one half. X to the one half. Okay, so it's y equal the square root of x, which is x to the one half, but it is plus or minus. Right? Because yes. if we remember back to our parent functions in our library that we were building, this part here is y equal the square root of x. But if I look at this, it's the negative, the reflection across the x-axis. So this is the equation of the inverse. I'm not going to tell you the trick yet, how to find that, if you, if you didn't find it yet. So we're going to revisit this one, how to find the equation of the inverse of a function, because there's a quick, easy, algebraic way to do it. But let yeah, me heard, but say that again, Eric? It's on the equation. Okay, what, what, did, what did you get? I got x equals y squared, or y squared. Equals x. Okay, so x equal y squared, if I were to solve for y in that, I would square root each side, right? So that would give me y equals plus or minus the square root of x, which is what Reese said. Yeah. How did you do that, Eric? How did you get x equals y squared to be the equation? Well, I was looking at the uh, the first investigation, and I was kind of trying to like figure out how they're related. And it's usually uh, the fact that you substitute one or the other uh, values. So I tried substituting in Desmos um, y uh, y squared and x. Yeah. So, I mean, that is that is the trick. You interchange the domain and range. So you interchange the X and the Y, and then you solve for Y if you wanted it in that form. Absolutely. Now, is this image, is this reflection across Y equal X a function? Is that graph the No, Abiella says no, why? 
because it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. It wouldn't pass the vertical line test. Good. In fact, each of these, other than zero, each of these x values have two y values. Excellent. Christopher, does that help? Yeah. Okay. All right, y'all are good to go. Let's do number, let's do investigation three and the summary. And let's try to go over those two, those thing, those two pages before we leave today. Excellent. Good job.
when you have finished investigation three and the summary, raise your hand in teams so I can give you something else to do, a puzzle. I'm not rushing you, but when you have finished, raise your hand in teams. Reese, I posted a puzzle in our team's chat since you have finished. Feel free to work on that.
When you have finished investigation three and the summary, raise your hand in Teams. And then there is a puzzle that I posted in the chat. But don't do that until you finish these so that we can go over these. Eric, did you have a question? Yeah, uh, I was going to ask if on um, question number four for a summary, do we have to make a new uh, graph? Uh, no, no. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, if you need to see it, you can do a quick little sketch, right? But if you think you know it, you do not have to, you don't have to make a new one. It's up to you. If you, if it helps, use it, but it's not necessary. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.
When you have finished investigation three and the summary, raise your hand in teams so we can go over it.
Okay, Nathan, did you see the puzzle that I posted in our chat, our team's chat? Abiella, did you see the the uh, puzzle I posted in the chat? I haven't looked yet. Either. Okay. Now, since you finished, as y'all finish, raise your hand so I know when we can go over the investigation three and summary. And then I did post a little picture puzzle for y'all to look at once you have finished. Okay, I'm going to give you all about 10 more minutes. I know a few of you are still working, um, but we will go over the answer in about 10 more minutes to the investigation three and the summary. So try to bring those to closure. We will discuss the answers and the findings, the summary. In the meantime, if you have finished, there is a picture puzzle that I posted in the chat. But complete that only when you have finished. Nathan says he has an answer. Let me see. Let me see what you got. 
All of them are correct except the last one. You got the first three correct, Nathan, except for the last one. Try the last one again. I'm happy to check your answers if you want me to tell you if your answer for the puzzle is correct. Christopher, Natalie, how are we coming on the investigation and the summary? We're doing okay. I'm just, I'm just still working on the summary. On the summary, okay. What about you, Christopher? I'm also on the summary. Okay, good. Okay, so about seven, uh, eight more minutes, and we'll go over the answers. In the meantime, there is a picture puzzle, a different one. Okay, Natalie, there is a picture puzzle posted in chat. So Christopher, as soon as you finish, or in a couple minutes, we will go over the answer.
Okay, what type of function is this parent function that you have been given? What do we call that? Move away from the puzzle. Let's go over the answers. What, <laughs> what type of parent function is this? What do we call that? You guys? Anybody? Nobody wants to answer my question. I'm very sad. Cubic? It is a cubic parent function. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I mean, I technically could come up with a table of values. So I could make a table of values if I wanted. And I could choose any domain value. So it's, there are no restrictions. And I could cube the, each of these numbers. And I could plot... my values, and I should be able to get the graph of my cubic parent function. So that's what it looks like, that little, that little snaky looking thing. Now, if I were to fold this along y equal x, you should be able to recognize the function that you're getting for the reflection. So this is the reflection of y equal x cubed across y equal x. So if you were to look at the relationship, and again, you know, we, we got to be a little, a little bit more careful. I should be a little bit more careful here with the graph because these kind of look like that. That's kind of ugly. I don't really like that. That's not very accurate. Let me fix that. I'm a little uncomfortable by the inaccuracy. It looks like that. Still not perfect, but then it looks like that. All right, that's a little bit better. All right, so if you were to interchange these, you should be able to see the reflection Right, and we should be able to pay attention to what's happening. Obviously, when y equals x, those values aren't changing. So at 1, 1, at 0, 0, and at negative 1, negative 1, when the x value is the y value, on either of those graphs, they, those points don't change. However, what you should notice is that the negative, you know, the, the, the domain and range are still changing, right, for each of these. But those, the intercept zero, zero doesn't change. So do we know the equation of the inverse? Dare I ask if anybody was able to get the equation of the inverse? Anybody? Mm -mm. Nobody got the equation of the inverse? Nobody. Nobody. Well, I'll tell you the trick. Since we know the domain of the original function becomes the range of the inverse, so this is the original, and this is the inverse, the reflection. And the range of the original function becomes the domain of the inverse. Then what you can do is just interchange x with y and y with x. Right? Because the domain of the original, x, becomes the range in the inverse. The range in the original becomes the domain of the inverse. So this is technically the equation of the inverse of the original. Now, if I wanted to solve for y, how would I solve for y? 
of, like if I wanted to put this in the calculator, what would I do to isolate the Y? What would I have to do to each side? Anybody know? Take the cube root. Take the cube root of each side. So that is just going to give me Y on the left hand side equals the cube root of X. Eric, is that a surprise to you? It shouldn't be after what you said on the last one, right? Yeah, it was. It was a surprise? Yeah, ma'am. <laughs> so are y'all, did, I mean, have you seen that before? When you took Algebra 2, do you remember interchanging the X and the Y to get the equation of the inverse? I mean, that's how you do it. That's the algebraic way. The geometric interpretation of taking the inverse of a function is the reflection across Y equal X. The algebraic way to manipulate an equation to get the equation of its inverse is to interchange the X and the Y. Now, this reflection of Y equal X cubed, is that image a function? Yes or no? Abiella, you, you answered the question last time. Is it a function? Yes. Yes, it is. Because it passes the vertical line test. Yeah. It does. And remember, you can take the cube root of a negative number. We could not take the, the square root of a negative number. That's why we had the plus or the minus to get the graph. Any questions on investigation three? No? Okay. In the summary, in the three investigation, which functions had images that were functions? Meaning we started with a function, and once we reflected it, we got a function. What two, what, e I'm not gonna tell you which ones, which equations? Y equal, which ones? Y equals to X plus one and Y equals X to the third power. Absolutely correct. Those two, not Y equal X squared. Good. What would you have to do to a function whose image was not a function to make its image a function? So if we took a function and we reflected it about Y equal X and it wasn't a function, like Y equals X squared, what could you have done to y equal x squared, right? Its inverse was x equal y squared or y equals the square root of x. What could you have done to that graph to make it a function? What transformation could we have done? There's a cheap way to do it. We could have just reflected it about y equal x, but we could also reflect it across y equals negative x. Who wanted to be super clever? Mm -hmm. Now, if you are asked to describe the images of the points on the original function that intersect the line y equal x, well, what could we say about those? The points when y equal x, so points when or on y equal x, are on the original and the inverse, right? Because they fall on the line y equal x. So if I'm a point that falls on the line y equal x, I'm going to be on the original point as well as the inverse, the reflection. Now, what happens in number four, what type of equation is this? What does the graph of y equal four look like? A vertical line. Yeah. Or a horizontal line. It is a, it's a horizontal line, right? It's a horizontal line at y equal four. That's what the original function looks like, y equal four. If I were to reflect that about y equal x, what is the reflection? 
What is the inverse? What is the inverse of y equal 4? If I were to reflect that, Eric, you, you, you asked me whether or not you needed to do it. If you reflect it, it would be x equals 4. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Very good. So this would be the reflection. If you don't believe me, use the patty paper and do it. So a horizontal line becomes a vertical line. A vertical line becomes a horizontal line when we reflect it about y equal x. So the relationship between a function and an inverse, well, it is the reflection, of course, geometrically across y equal x. Domain and range are interchanged. So you just interchange the x with the y and the y with the x and solve for y to get the equation. Now, is the inverse of a function, no matter what I give you, so if I give you this function, or I give you this function, or I give you this function, or I give you this function, is the inverse of a function always a function? Yes or no? Yes. It is? Wasn't this wasn't this one a function, but it's in oops, sorry. Wasn't this a function, but its inverse wasn't? Nathan? My bad. So that's okay, Nathan. That's okay. This, this, this is why we're doing it now. The inverse of a function is not always a function. It is always a relation. It is not always a function. Does that make sense? Nathan, does that make sense? So the inverse of a function, if you begin with a function, you will, if you take the reflection, the inverse, the reflection across y equal x, it is not always a function. Okay. It always is a relation, but it's not always a function. All right. Is the inverse of function always a relation? Yes, because it's just a pairing of input and output values, right? It's just a pairing of input and output values. Now, are there two functions? Can you think of two functions whose reflections across y equal x are their own inverses? A function that is its own inverse. Did anybody come up with a function that is its own inverse? Meaning if I were to reflect it across y equal x, I would get the same thing. Anybody? Can anybody tell me a function whose inverse is itself? Y equals x? y equals x absolutely because y equal x every point on y equal x is on its inverse x equal y is there another one so that is correct this is its own inverse what about y equals negative x is that its own inverse yes Yes, it is. <laughs> y equals negative x. And what does that look like? This, right? Okay. All right. So are there any other questions on that? No? All right. I am going to leave you with that puzzle. Nathan, were you able to get the last one? Okay. Don't tell me. Don't say it. Uh, since some of you are just now starting it, I'm not going to go over the answer. I'm going to leave you with it. And if you want to know the answer before tomorrow, you can send me a chat and I'll tell you if your answers are correct. Otherwise, I will go over the answer tomorrow. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you.
Bye, Miss. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye, Miss. Have a nice day. You 